So, so far we looked at how to create threads, how to make them do something, but we haven't looked at how to get a result from them. So how do we actually get a, the return value from a thread into our main function? This is what we're going to talk about in today's video. To start off, let's simply create a thread. So I'm going to say here p thread underscore t th and let's say if p thread create and that's about it. I have created here a simple function called roll dice. What the threads are going to do is they are going to roll a dice and return the result. And then in the main function, I'm expecting to actually uh, print that result here. How do we do that? Well, first, let's um, roll the dice. That's the very easy thing to do. We just have to create here a or include here time.h to initialize the random generation with time of null. By the way, if you don't know how random generation works in C, there's a link up top to a video about that. Inside roll the dice, I guess we can just create here a int value equals rand. And since we need a value between one and six, well, we definitely need to say uh, modulo six, but I want to add one to the result because then, so modulo six gives us results between zero and five. And if we add one, we get results between one and six. Okay, so now we have the value that's very simple and straightforward. Actually, we can even print it if we want. So, say here percent d backslash n value. And if I launch the program, we should be getting a value as a one. And if I try to launch it again, I should get a different value for, okay. So we get the expected result. Now, how do we get this value from here, from this threads function to the main function? That is the question for today. Now, the answer has to do with this second parameter of pthread join. This pthread join, as you can see, takes in the thread, the thread handle, and takes in a double pointer to void. Now, this is a double pointer to void simply because in this function, you might have noticed that I defined it with a void pointer, uh, a just simple pointer to void as the return type. And that's not uh, randomly chosen. That's basically what the Peter create expects to have here and what we're going to use to actually send this result. Right. So this Peter join, what it's going to do is it's going to take a basically a reference to a pointer or a pointer to pointer or a double pointer, however you want to call it. And it's going to set the value from within it to whatever we have sent from here. So uh, if we try to set here, let's say an int pointer, let's say result. And if we want to pass in this pointer to the Peter join, what we have to do is just pass in a reference to that res so that it's a double pointer. It is a double pointer to int, but remember, uh, void pointers are sort of considered a wild card. They can be anything really. So as long as we cast it, it should be fine. I think in C you don't really need to cast it, but just for uh, not getting any warnings, it's it's better that way. Okay, but then how do we actually get the value from here? Because we need to return a void pointer. We don't just return an int. So simply returning value is not enough, right? We, well, we can return an, uh, a reference to our value. So this will give us an int pointer, which can be casted to a void pointer. That is perfectly fine. And we can try it out by print f result, let's say, send the backslash n. And I can say here, instead of just result, since that's a pointer, we want to print the value at that pointer. All right. And let's also comment out this line and let's try to launch this. Now you might notice that we got segmentation fold. Now why, why that is? Well, 
The answer is actually pretty simple. I have written here a reference to the value that is local to this function. So you can't really do that with functions, right? You cannot just return a reference to a local variable because that local variable will be deallocated because it's on the stack. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to dynamically allocate this pointer that we return here. So instead of just uh, casting the reference to this variable to void pointer, what we'll do is actually create another uh, result. It's going to be a pointer and we're going to malloc it with a size of print like that. And we're going to say the value of result equals our value. And then just return result as a result as you'd expect. And now this result will be the same as this res from the main function. So if I try to, well, if I stop this and try to launch it, you will notice we get five here. But remember that because we are using malloc, we'll always have to deallocate the memory. And since we are returning it here, we cannot deallocate it in this function. We have to deallocate it inside our main function. So if we're done with our res, we have to also free it in here. Now, if you want to be extra sure that what we have returned here is actually what's going to be stored in, in here, you can simply print f and say percent %p backslash n our address, which is result. So that would be the thread result. And let's copy and paste this here. This is the thread and this is the main res variable, which is going to be called just res no uh, asterisk at the beginning we're just taking the actual value and we're using percent p that is for printing out a pointer's value the address itself so if you print those two we should see the exact same uh, values as we can see here so this is just fff with hc0 and then same thing with hc0 so that means that we have in fact returned the same address and it's all working perfectly now there is one caveat to this uh, from an architectural standpoint, and that is that this pointer, this res pointer that we're getting in a main function is being allocated in another function that we don't know about. So it's not necessarily that this pointer is dynamically allocated unless we look at the source code and we see that, oh, it is dynamically allocated so that we have to deallocate it. Usually what you want to do is allocate and deallocate the same place in memory in the same function. Right now we're not doing that. We're doing it between the two functions. For a small program like that, it's fine. But uh, if in a large program, it's usually not the greatest ideas. And in a future video, we're going to take a look at how we can improve this using the threads arguments that we haven't uh, looked at at all so far. And I guess a good exercise for you guys out there is to try and make this program actually run multiple threads. Because right now we're just creating one thread. But uh, let's say we want to roll eight dice at the same time in parallel. You try and make the program using the for loops, the structure of the for loops that we discussed in the previous video. That's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server the source code is going to be of course on our website again link in the description below take care bye